Cheers. <laughs> yes. Light the fuse? Yes. yes. Big fan. Really? Big fan, yes. Really? Yeah. He should come on. <laughs> Seriously. Do you like Mission Impossible? I, I, I do. Oh my I gosh, do. I love yeah. you guys. Thank you very much. That's really cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have a question. Uh, Orca and uh, Flix, openly gay couple in Star Wars. They're going home to their to one of their. To their see parents. the mother. Yeah, the mother. Yeah. Have, um, you, have you discussed I, this? I think I think it's safe to say they're they're an item. Yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're they're absolutely a gay couple, and you know we're proud of that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we we love Flix and Orca. They we love those guys. Awesome. Yeah. And Bobby and Jim, who play, are just yeah. so yeah. wonderful. They have the same chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, they're my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> with, with that in mind, what are you guys most proud of uh, with Resistance? What do you think made the biggest mark on Star Wars history with it? Oh, mm. along First, with your awards. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I'm proud of the fact that Dave Filoni trusted us to create a whole new universe that wasn't part of the Star Wars lore, lore originally, mm -hmm. um, and also the support behind the diversity that we have in the show, um, mm -hmm. not just in the character design, but also in our voice actors that um, bring them to life. Yeah, yeah, I love the, the eclectic characters. Um, I love the designs. Um, I'm just so proud of the whole team and what we've done. I'm just over the moon, you know. Yeah, and the fact that like we get to see kind of like the slice of life you know what I mean? Like this sort of like they're all kind of blue collar. They're all sort of like they're not like big. They don't start as these big epic heroes like none of them are Jedi. You know, right. they're, they're really just kind of trying to survive at the edge of the galaxy. And then we get to see this sort of, you know, this insidious sort of like, you know, this this first order sort of creep in. Right. Like the, this. And we've never really seen that before, how they take over, how they convince people that they're they're on the right side. Right. And everybody else is wrong like that. I feel like is very important and very timely. I wanted to ask a little bit about that because it's so well done and that it's, it's very easy to kind of have black and white it as the, the mm -hmm. mythology is done. And this one really shows you the steps mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the personal stakes uh, of why Tam is making the decisions that she's making. So talk a little right. bit about pitching that arc and then executing it in the best way. And then as all the great art does, has about how it really kind of is in some ways kind of modeling what's going on in the world today in any any kind of time or place but that people can look at that as an example and really take something from that right right well i i when we realized that tam uh, was going to go into the first order uh it almost happened organically and we we didn't want it to happen but we knew it had to happen you know um and uh you know it gave us an opportunity to get a little more insight you know into the first order um, but speaking to the diversity, you know, the characters have different perspectives, different backgrounds. And, you know, Tam's background with her grandfather working for the Empire, you know, she doesn't view them as, as a bad guy. You know, they helped her family out. And in her eyes, the First Order could be police officers, mm -hmm. you know, enforcement that she can get behind. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have characters like Tyranny, who is very manipulative, and she sees this weakness and what she's feeling. She got hurt, you know, by her friends. So this is an opening for her to recruit. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just to try and bring that depth to these characters. And we see that on in season one, how Tam looks towards Yeager as a father. She looks towards Kaz as like a friend and a brother. And, you know, you have someone like Rucklin that's constantly reminding her in season two that, you know, they were traitors. They didn't include her in any of the conversations where you would see Yeager pull Kaz aside for a little bit and have these conversations. And she would be like, well, how come they're not telling me what's going on? I had no idea that he was a spy. Um, so she felt a little betrayed and so when you're feeling that weak then something like hey you could be a pilot which is what she was working towards all through season right. one and she never had that opportunity it was actually given to kaz more because even though she was working on the vehicle Yeager gave it to him, Kaz. Yeah. Yeah. The who fireball. was this kid, you know, who took yeah. the thing that yeah. she was working on, you know? And the First Order doesn't believe themselves as evil. Like, that's the thing. Like, like evil never really sees themselves as evil. Evil sees them, you know, like, the First Order sees themselves as they're going to bring order to the galaxy. Mm -hmm. They're going to bring, like, law and, and, and order, essentially. Like, and th they'll go to any extremes to do that. And, you know... And that's that, and you can you can compare that to any kind of evil regime over the course of history, right? They never see themselves as the bad guys. They always see themselves as doing things to get the job done, so that people are safer, that there's order, there's um, there's law, and you know it just you know. But how are these? How are they achieving these things? Like, yeah. that's 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 what evil is. 
and, and the manipulation just comes out of the fact that they just think that they're right. Um, so that we thought that was important. We couldn't just paint the first order as just being like evil for the sake of evil. Even tyranny believes that they're that they're doing this for the right reasons. Believe it or not, this is a children's show. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, can you, you know, believe that? Cool. Can you believe that? <laughs> but what I do love about season two is we get to introduce conflict and you get to see how it's resolved through the episodes. That's right. So you guys work pretty tightly between the films because these are kind of the meat in between the, mm -hmm. the, the trilogy. Um, what's the process like now that we're closing in on the end of the Skywalker saga and how it plays into Resistance? Mm -hmm. We have our writers conferences that take place about like a year in advance, believe it or not. Nice. Um, and we do have a roadmap that's set up. And in between, we have continuity reviews where we come in on a Saturday, we review like half of the episodes in whatever state they're in, whether it's blocking or full color um, or even close to air, to be honest. And we never f see it as finally done until we've had discussions on what's missing. We right. could change dialogue up to the last minute. But we also include the Lucasfilm story group in these meetings to make sure that we stay within continuity and stay within what the stories are so that we don't, you know, do anything out of what JJ's expecting or what out of Filoni's expecting. Right, right. Because, yeah, we have to make sure everything is connected. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's right. Guys, out of, uh, from the storytelling perspective, with the two seasons, and you obviously you have your ending already set and you had your beginning, were there areas you wanted to explore that you're just not going to find the time to... Oh boy! I mean, we have so many characters, so many you know rich possibilities. It like there, a lot of possibilities. For yeah, you. a lot of backstories that we could have gone into, but you know, it really is the you know the main story that we're telling. Uh, you know, we couldn't go into, you know, all of that. Yeah, I mean, there's I mean, so many. It's a survival story. Really, season two is about surviving and, and <clears throat> constantly being chased by the first order. And then, what happens when the ship that that came up out of the ocean um, from this ocean planet? It wasn't really like a, meant to be spacefaring at this point in time, right? Maybe a few years or even a few decades earlier, but they weren't really prepared to launch this thing into space. There's, you know, out there they need food, they need fuel, they just need to figure out a way to survive. That's so it's it's like really just trying to kind of that was sort of the jumping off point, and then then we f found okay, we can explore this part of the galaxy. And now there are these characters maybe after them, and you know what's the first order doing? How are they going to track them down? How are they going to use Tam? You know, so it's really that that became the, the, the core focus of season two. But what, what's a lot of fun is that we, you know, now the pirates are on board, you know, as well. It's like, OK, yeah. what happens when you add them to the mix? You know, yeah, what yeah. kind of tension and conflict do you have from there? A lot of X factors throughout season two and, and, and how that's going to play into like the danger and the excitement. You kind of alluded to it. Was the Colossus always meant to fly from the beginning? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, you're saying did did we plan that, or are you yeah. saying just in general was that ship always? I think yeah, both. <laughs> yeah. kind of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. something that we had talked about from very early yeah, yeah, yeah. on. That's something that like even Dave Filoni wanted to yeah, see. Yeah, that was, the that was one of those images where it's like you think it's an oil rig, and then it comes up, and you're like, oh crap, that's a spaceship. You know, oh, that yeah. was one of those images that we knew had to happen. Yeah, that yeah. was from very early on. Yeah. Well, yeah. we had to, we wanted to keep it behind closed doors for quite some time, even with our own team members, because we wanted them to be surprised as well. I mean, obviously the designers knew, right. um, <laughs> but it was something where it was like, just when we screened it for the team and they saw it happening, they're like, what? Yeah, it was pretty it cool. It was really cool, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a photo in season one of Yeager's family uh, in oh. Batuu. Mm. <laughs> uh, will we be, will we be uh, visiting Black Spire Outpost in season two? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we we can probably say there was talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, we so. we had discussions, um, and uh, other than that, I don't know. you'll have to watch the season. <laughs> well, we're all gonna watch the season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there was a lot of talk. Okay. Right. And there was some back and forth, and we were really trying to figure out. But you know, at the time, well, you'll see. You'll okay. see. I don't. We we can't give away too yeah. much. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> us what it is but are you guys already moving on to the next phases of the stories that you're going to be telling today? Uh, well believe it or not we're still in production uh, wrapping up the, the end of the season so we're just like yeah. our mindset all the focus is, is on, on that you know yeah. season two make yeah. sure we stick the landing so yeah we have time for one more question you guys did you have one I just I had, a, I had a generic one but from the process I know you're still wrapping up production on two and so what's been your favorite moments from the two seasons um, for me, on a personal level, and I, I'm genuine in saying this, I know it sounds weird, but I've 
this is one of the best productions I've been on, getting to work with Justin and Brandon and Filoni in this capacity. Um, and if I don't... <laughs> I hope I get that opportunity again, you know, because it's been a lot of fun from the voice record sessions to the writers conferences to just everything. And um, I feel like if this is okay to say that I kind of grew up or grew on the show because it was my first time ever getting to do these types of um, like panels and outlets and everything. And um, I just I feel like I've maybe grew a little bit you know in terms of that it was a great experience like i i loved it very much well and likewise with athena she's awesome yep. you know we just they, we have you. such a cool crew and and i'm so proud of everyone you know on the show um i think in the 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 series itself um i think when we had tam you know take tyranny's hand and go into the first order i mean it's heart-wrenching but i think that was such a we really wanted that moment to mm -hmm. to sing and uh, it was hard but i i, I like that moment yeah for me it was just seeing like how the first order is insidiously sort of like you know infiltrating and taking over like i thought that was just an interesting like once that arc started happening mm -hmm. and i just like it just it just becomes so much more like interesting and compelling for me and and in season two Boy, I, I wish we could talk more about season two, but there are so many cool things that happen in season two. I mean, it's it's kind of mind blowing. It's like a fun, fun adventure. Just yeah, it's it's a really fun, exciting like new creatures, new villains, things that we've never seen before. So, okay. season two is you know there's a lot to look forward to. And it's yeah, new new for these characters as well because yeah. they've been on Castle on this whole time and now they're lost in space. So what do they do? Yeah. And sorry, I answered the question on a personal level. On a Star Wars Resistance level, um, I'm excited about a new character that we will be introducing halfway through which Ooh. means it means the world to me yeah it's very important for me on a personal level so <laughs> looking forward to you guys seeing that awesome thank you there's cool there's, there's like a junk at log jam so we can do one more question Ooh, log jam log log that's jam fun log jam yeah, one more time <laughs> 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 yes, right 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 right. <laughs> Uh, this is this is my personal question. Um, Tora and her father uh, are very important to me because my dad and I are Chilean. Um, so seeing Latinx representation mm -hmm. not only in the show but between a father daughter duo mm -hmm. was a really big thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to see uh, a little bit more about like where they came from and and what makes them the kind of team? They yes. Are? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 So and it's one of the most important things for me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, season two we get we get more in depth um, backstory with a lot of our characters. So yeah, yeah there's fun. even more of that. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Justin, can I sneak one in? You worked sure. with with Dave back in uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender back in 2005. Back in the old school, yeah. So I mean, that process of watching him as a storyteller, how's that been? Oh working man, with him now? I've learned so much from him through the years. Um, I I was his assistant director having not storyboarded ever before Avatar because I was a character designer and I pretended to draw storyboards in my portfolio and they liked it. And I was like, uh, what like, do I do oh, now? That was unexpected. <laughs> yeah, and he is he is so smart and aware of, you know, emotional storytelling and his sophistication. I mean, he grew up on Star Wars and Godzilla and, you know, all those fun things. So we dressed up as Plo and Giancarlo dressed up as Kia, uh, Kit Fitzto for, yeah, like, Kit the Fist premiere of... Um, Phantom Menace, right? Yeah. <laughs> but was it Attack of the Clones? Floney oh, even built the okay. a Mecha Godzilla suit, and I helped him on Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> when they were doing the Godzilla premiere. He actually crashed uh, the party that he had there. We had to make sure he wasn't going to knock any, anyone over. That's the best. He literally That's crashed the party. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, he's a massive, massive Godzilla fan. It's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he has been so supportive, and I'm mm -hmm. so grateful for, you know, his advice and mentorship through the years. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have a – yeah, I'm so grateful. You guys ever look at the Kennedy Tartakovsky Clone Wars stuff? It seems to be have yeah, it's sort of like locked away in the like <laughs> you know dark corner of Lucasfilm, mm. but but there's so much dynamism and, and amazing animation in that. Did you ever look to that for inspiration? You know, uh, uh, for this show, no. Okay. Um, when we were on Clone Wars, you know, because that had happened before yeah. uh, mm -hmm. our Clone Wars, and. Um, yeah, we all were just like, wow, designs are great. The timing is fun. Like, it, it, you felt it, you know, the action. Uh, but that wasn't where Lucas wanted to go with the series. You know, he had different ideas. So he we wanted to go CG, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? I mean, he wanted to do CG. Oh, oh, yeah, yes. right, right. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, okay, that exists, but we're going over here. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Well, now we really have to end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a couple extra in. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cool. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be like I'm going to tell Charles. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You have to get your dress in there. But you're amazing. You have to get the dress. My dad is from Santiago. My dad is from Hill, I said hi. He doesn't know me, but... God, see, you got to come on that show, too. Santiago's from Santiago. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, 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 yes. That, too. Here, I'm going to leave this here for you on the floor. There we go. Okay. Against the room. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, we're Latinas and Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you Very both cool. so much. Thank you. <laughs> like, I'm Tora and her father, I like sent the moment they were on screen, I like sent it straight to my dad. My dad and I are like this about Star Wars. Yes. And, like, Hit us so hard. My so. dad took me to see Star Wars for the first time at the uh, Coronet Theater in Geary Street. Yep, Return of the Jedi when it was re-released was my ninth birthday, and he took me right. There, yeah, so. That's awesome. those <sighs> were the you. days where you yeah. sat in line for two hours oh, and we were yes. passing out the souvenir booklets. Real and we were all sweaty and yeah. makeup yeah. and everything. Yes, yes. Exactly. yes. 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 Ah, it was you. so thank nice to officially so meet you. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Yay. Oops, where did my phone just go? In my pocket. Oh, thank you. Because <laughs> I thought it was mine. <laughs> I know, it's like forbidden fruit. Dude, that question is 